Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. New neighbor starts trouble, but OP stands up to him and gets justice with the help of video evidence. The second story. Terrible manager's behavior leads to a powerful response from a brave employee, forcing her to quit under stress. The third story. Former fired employee gets a chance to reject his old company's proposal, sending greetings to the boss. The first story is... Real man have real speakers. Before moving to our house, we had been living in an apartment complex. My block had 36 apartments. I had been living there for six years with my girlfriends and her two kids. The area was considered a low income slash welfare dump. But we got along really well with our neighbors until this redneck slash racist maybe moved in next door. I'll always remember the day he came in July the 1st. Here in Canada slash Quebec, it's like a national day. Everybody moves on that day so the roads and parking lots are filled with moving trucks, traffic jams and everything that comes with it. My girlfriend and kids were out. I was alone cooking dinner and sipping in vodka. I had the music playing from MP3 player hooked to a pair of speakers bought from the dollar store. These speakers were so sh that I literally had to turn off everything in the apartment in order to hear them. The reason I was using these was because my apartment was too small for the other speakers I had in storage. I was a DJ back in the days so I did have over 10k watts of speaker in storage, along with heavy duty amps and my vinyls and DJ equipment and whatnot. Anyways, as I was cooking and dancing to Tracy Chapman in my slippers, and I heard the loudest bang ever. The frames on the wall felt, I thought an accident had happened. Maybe a fridge, washing machine, something heavy fell on someone or something of that nature. So I turn off the frying pan and the rice pot, put down the level of boiling water, lobster were almost ready, turned oven off, crabs, I put on my running shoes that were by the door, I ran out to the hall to give assistance and asked if everything was okay. And lo and behold I see this dude pointing fingers at me and cursing. I could not comprehend a thing from his words, or rather the sense slash meaning of them. Oh, I understood every word he said, but could not believe this guy. And here's what he said to me. I just moved in and I'm fed up of moving out apartments over and over, so I plan to stay a little more than that. At least three months this time. And if I stay those three months, I will not tolerate any disco or black music in my ears. What? To this he adds, I was in jail for so many years. At this point I'm about to lose it. But before telling you what happens next, let me describe you the scene. The hallway is about five to six feet wide. There are stucco walls and the floor is industrial carpet. This man is about 5 feet 4 inches tall. No teeth or I think he had one or two before starting this. He wore a wife beater and had some old bleach tattoo of an anchor probably made in jail. Bald head, you can fill in the rest. He looked like a naked Danny DeVito. And I'm insulting Danny. Sorry, mate. Behind him was his wife slash girlfriend, I assumed. And she was screaming her lungs out at me saying that I should step back because her man will hurt me. And almost on cue, he got, I guess, braver and or brazier, and started puffing his chest walking up to me with his finger up to my face rehashing his past accomplishments. I beat up this guy and that guy if you think I'm scared of you because you're black, etc. He spat on the floor while jabbing me with his index finger. And then, ha, ah, stop, stop, it hurts. He could not stop screaming. By this time, I had taken that dirty finger of his and twisted it. He bent down holding his finger, and I hit him in the face while holding his head down. His wife came at me with a flower pot. I dodged it and when she went on the floor screaming and shouting she'll have her biker friends skin me alive. The effing bum did not seem to have enough and came back at me trying to jab me with his left. But I dodged again so he went down too. Cops arrived at the scene. Neighbors got out in the hallway. Or they were out already. Now this was when the funny part began. The cops ask for their version but they can't seem to talk in front of me. As they bring the wife and girlfriend outside to the paramedics I can hear her saying that I started this that I was a gangbanger and all the BS story, and on top of that I was playing my music loud. The effing guy's on the floor screaming and crying like a bee threatening me. I don't know who the effie is, blah blah blah, cry cry cry. The other partner came and asked me for my version, which I explained gladly and the neighbors confirmed the story. At the same time my girlfriend and kids arrived with our pit bulls. My daughter and son were holding the leash of the dogs. My daughter jumped in my arms scared. My boy was asking me why the cops were there. The whole block was there. Then the landlord came down, shook my hand, pet the dogs while we greeted my girlfriend and kids. He asked me what was all this about. I told him this new tenant of his started all this. At this point in time, I told my girlfriend and the kids to get in with the dogs inside our apartment. The cops seemed nervous about them. 
The landlord said there were cameras in all the blocks so they could review the footage. But before he went to review the footage, he apologized, saying that someone had asked him for a favor to rent these a-holes an apartment. And he said to me that he was sorry. He knew I was not the instigator, that he never had a problem with me in the past six years, and that since he did not have time to sign the bail with the new neighbors, he was going to give them a month and kick them out after. The cops came to ask me to get inside my apartment. While one would go and review the tape, the other would stay with me. While she was taking down my info, relaying them to her dispatch, she was asking me questions about my work, etc. She seems to be surprised when I said that I was still a full-time university student while working full-time and taking care of my kids and girlfriend. The dispatch said over the radio that there was no warrant for me and no cases were found. I had a clean slate. Then she started making small talk with my girlfriend, and I noticed that she was looking all over the apartment. I guess she was looking to see what kind of family we were and how we were living. And I can say with certainty that we had an outstanding flat. And then I said to the kids, dinner's almost ready. They asked what we were eating, I said crab and lobster with rice and salad. I purposefully put an emphasis on the crab and lobster, then added, don't forget to get the wine, babe. I offered her some, which she denied. Then the other police knock on the door with my landlord. I offered them to stay and eat. The police said he would if he could. The landlord refused but asked us to put a dish aside for his wife. The cops said that everything was fine, that I did not start this. Then they asked to see how loud we were playing the speakers. And when they saw those scrawny speakers, they started laughing. They told me if I wanted to sue my neighbors, I could. The dispatch radioed in saying they had to arrest both of them, one for unpaid tickets, the other for not going to court. I added that the wife threatened me with her biker gang and they added that to the report. And I had proof because everything was recorded with sound, said the cops who viewed the tape. Later that week, the landlord had to move the furniture back outside on the sidewalk. Apparently when the cop left, they headed for the hospital and had handcuffed both of them. The husband was handcuffed to his stretcher and the wife was also handcuffed and put in the back of the police car. They said that we would not see them anytime soon. The next story is how I got a terrible manager so embarrassed and stressed she quit. I worked under a manager a few years ago who is awful in every sense of the word. She would throw personal belongings into the garbage, things like designer purses, coffee mugs, etc. Her excuse was they shouldn't be laying around in the open. I understand that, but you don't throw people's personal belongings away. This manager also enjoyed making our lives hell. She would add extra work on us from previous shifts that were short-staffed as well as add work when governing bodies would be coming in to clean up the area. We would tell her we didn't have the already hilariously ridiculous time to get the impossible work done. She started suggesting we skip our breaks. Whenever we complained we didn't have time to complete work, she would say, oh, I never got breaks whenever I worked for 40 years before getting this position. She'd even say things like, oh, your breaks aren't that important. Me, being nice to people's faces to a point, shouldn't have been messed with. I emailed the general manager of the building as well as his assistant, a union representative, and our union president. I explained how our manager was treating the staff regarding our breaks, and how our belongings were literally being thrown in the garbage. Nobody responded to my email, but with the system we used you could see everyone who saw it. So when everyone saw it and I received no reply, I replied to the email, failure to respond appropriately within a week will result in this email being forwarded to the Ministry of Labor and Human Rights Board. I received two emails from the union. One was the representative saying he did not agree with the manager's comments. The other from the general manager saying he would deal with the issue. The next day I came in for my evening shift. The manager was standing next to our reporting area looking very upset. She pointed at a paper on the wall and explained that the general manager gave her that and that we were to sign off when we took our breaks. And if for whatever reason we missed it, she was to pay us overtime for it. She then took me aside and told me she did not understand why someone would report her for cracking jokes. I responded with, jokes are made when everyone laughs. When you made your jokes about our breaks and throwing our belongings out, not even you were laughing. She quit three days later, stating too much stress. Edit. I also forgot to mention that there was once I was off work hours and still there, holding my thermos mug, and she came over to the reporting area and grabbed it. I told her I was off the clock and not to touch my belongings. She told me I wasn't allowed to have it there and went over to the garbage with it. I grabbed the papers she was just carrying and held them over the paper shredder and told her if she throws my mug out, her important papers are going in the shredder. She gave me a lecture so I told her how inappropriate she was. She eventually put my mug down. I grabbed it and told her next time I'd be billing her for that. The third story is, the guy that was fired becomes a potential client's decision maker. Early in my IT career, I worked as a contract employee for a computer support firm, Cheapo Computer Services, doing everything from premise cabling to server setup and troubleshooting. One day I was sent out on a cabling job. 
only to find that the building, an older industrial one, had sprayed asbestos insulation everywhere I was supposed to run the cabling. I went back and told my boss, let's call him Scrooge, that we had troubles due to the presence of asbestos. He didn't take me very seriously until I started laying out the possible ramifications of disturbing the stuff. As part of a previous career, I'd had extensive training in hazmat remediation in addition to the 40-hour OSHA workplace safety training course. Even then, his reply was dismissive, telling me to get a dust mask from the hardware store, finish the job, and not to tell the client about the asbestos problem. Instead of a dust mask, I got a high-quality half-mask respirator with replaceable cartridges. He was downright B about having to reimburse me for it, claiming that a cheap dust mask should have been enough. I was able to get the cabling done, although in a rather sloppy manner, tying the cables off onto the vertical supports for the drop ceiling to avoid the asbestos. Fortunately, the client's employees assumed that the respirator was due to the decades of dust and debris which had accumulated up there. Not long after I finished the job, I was let go, with Scrooge giving the excuse that work was tapering off, and I wasn't needed any longer. I think the real reason was that he didn't want anyone working for him who knew anything about EPA and OSHA regs and or labor laws. Interestingly enough, during my subsequent job search, I came across an ad for my recently vacated position. Fast forward a year. I'd obtained a good net admin job, running a then state-of-the-art novel network. The CFO, who had the IT department in his group, wanted to get us set up with in-house email and collaboration software. At the time, Novel's GroupWise was the standout in this field. The CFO called Cheapo Computer Services to see about having them do the initial setup, explaining that we were a novel shop. They said no problem, that they would have a solution which worked on a novel network for us and would come out with a proposal for us within a week. When they came to give us the presentation, I noticed that both the salesperson and the tech who would be doing the work were new, not having work for Cheapo when I was there. Their proposal was less than ideal. They were touting a Windows-based solution, which required a dedicated Windows server, which was most definitely what we wanted to avoid. I pointed out that we were running novel and wanted a group-wise solution, whereupon they admitted that they didn't have anyone adequately versed in novel to be able to set up group-wise for us. With that, I politely thanked them for their time and said we'd be looking elsewhere for someone who could meet our needs. As they were packing to leave, I asked the salesperson to convey my greetings to Scrooge and that I hoped he hadn't had to deal with any asbestos problems lately. Edit. As far as I was concerned, they were doomed as soon as they arrived with their proposal. I was unaware that CCS had been asked by the CFO, only finding out it was that firm when they showed up. No matter what their proposal may have been, they wouldn't have gotten the project. I'd been doing some of my own research and found a novel reseller who actually wrote the book on GroupWise installation and administration. They got the project and did an excellent job for us. The fun for me was sending my greetings to Scrooge along with the news that they'd been rejected. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out and hit the like button to support the channel.